Hello everybody and welcome to This Week in Astrology with your friend Gretchen Heidel, full-time astrologer, life coach, Reiki master, and so much more. I am here tonight live. It is our Monday night date on Facebook, uh, 2024, March 4th, 2024 to be exact. And I will be going over This Week in Astrology from March 4th all the way until March 10th. And we have a lot going on. Uh, a lot of things are going to be happening uh, this week. And if you are just joining me, go ahead and like the post below, share with your friends, get the algorithm rolling, <laughs> comment, what is your astrological sign? Where are you tuning in from? We had some really cool shout outs uh, it, from Indiana, United States, um, also Scotland, also Australia. Like there's been a lot of people commenting from all around the world, which is pretty Pretty cool. I'm live here every Monday night on Facebook, my astrology updates by Gretchen Heidel page, or you can watch me on the replay. So if you see me looking up and down, I will, I'm will. i co-recording for YouTube. So welcome, welcome. I appreciate you guys uh, for joining. So we have a lot going on this week in astrology, uh, a lot happening. Um, but last week, oh my goodness, there was a lot. <laughs> it feels like there's always a lot going on, but last week was big too. We had leap day, uh, you know, that was a big thing. But the big deal was that we had a triple conjunction between the sun, Mercury, and Saturn all in Pisces, nine degrees Pisces. That came to a peak last Wednesday. Um, anybody out there experienced last week a little bit like a Mercury retrograde? I kind of did. Mercury was involved with all that, uh, with Saturn and the sun. It was like the creamy, delicious center of the Oreo cookie, but whoo, it was getting, it was getting worked out. Um, hey, Emily, welcome, Florida. Uh, Sagittarius, Cancer, Scorpio, love that. Hey, Rosalie, Capricorn in Vermont, we had, we had that happening, that triple conjunction that was in Pisces. Um, it's still, we'll say active, but it's, it, they're starting to break apart. The triple conjunction is starting to break apart, but they were, they were doing some stuff last week. Um, uh, and I, like I said, it came to a peak on Wednesday. Um, and then we had a bunch of other planetary things. We had a lot of planetary stuff last week going on. Um, so anybody else out there have anything big happen last week? Um, well, if if not, we're getting into this week now. Uh, in this in this week in astrology, we have a lot happening. We have the we have um, the new moon coming this week. Uh, we have Mercury is moving into Aries, which by the way is going to prep us. That's prepping us to get us into the Mercury retrograde season. So I'm just going to jump into the deep end here. So yesterday and today, Mercury again has been very active. So when we look at yesterday on Sunday, uh, 3 3, that was the 3 3 portal. And then we look in today, we have Mercury yesterday was uh, forming an opposition with Black Moon Lilith. Woo! And then today, Mercury formed a sextile, which is positive with Uranus. Uh, so we had Mercury was very active yesterday and today. Um, so if anybody was feeling that, like I said, there has been, I had a lot of technology problems last week, almost like as if it was a Mercury retrograde. I had, I mean, it was a lot of technology problems. A lot of that energy going on. Um, Mercury is still in Pisces. And so that's, that's why Mercury is forming the, uh, the opposition with Black Moon Lilith. So this weekend, past weekend there might have been a lot of like heavy conversations or something black moon lilith is currently in virgo and then mercury's in pisces so that was the opposition that was there and mercury in pisces i told you it can be a little challenging because because it's not direct communication it's indirect and then and Black Moon Lilith, even though she's like kind of like the Tasmanian devil a little bit, uh, she's in Virgo. So she, even though she's wild and crazy, she kind of wants it to be in order. Um, and so there's this like kind of push and a pull between those two. So it could have been almost experienced like as if it was a Pluto kind of transit uh, this past weekend with conversations. So that's that deep conversations, wanting to get to the bottom of things, wanting to know all the deal. And so that can be a big thing with Black Moon Lilith yesterday. Uh, that came to a peak yesterday, but it's still active today. Um, Monday and Tuesday, we'll, we'll be feeling those. Rosalie, thank you. My first stars of the evening. 
20 stars from Rosalie. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hey, Naomi. Welcome, welcome. Uh, and Sarah, Leo, and Vermont. Welcome. Um, Amir, yay. <laughs> we have the whole crew here tonight. I love it. Um, and so today we had uh, Mercury form a sextile with Uranus that came to a peak at 324 this afternoon. Eastern time, 12, 24 PM, if you're out on the West coast. And so that even today was like a little bit of like a, a thing, you know, Mercury and Uranus are the two live wires of the Zodiac, something shocking, something coming out of nowhere, something unexpected that would have been potentially today. Um, it's a sextile. So they're usually experienced a little bit more mildly, somewhat that opposition yesterday with, with Mercury and Black Moon Lilith was, was, um, definitely felt more harshly than the than the sextile but sextiles can be sometimes uh mild and nice and lovely but it's a surprise it's something that's unexpected it's something that came out of nowhere and again there could be that technology component there um also uranus and mercury whenever they get together can increase um anxiety so if you already lean that way that can be a little bit of an anxious transit uh sometimes people get a little ah you know with with that tomorrow really is uh i'm gonna dive in seems like a lot of people are live on the broadcast now tomorrow is the peak or the height or the pinnacle of that Chiron conjunct the north node of the moon. Now I covered that last week, um, uh, you know, in much more depth and much more detail. So if you guys really want to know more about that, that is good. You can go back to my video, but I'll, I'll just, I'm going to retouch on it again because it is a big, huge thing. And like I said last week, Chiron conjunct the North Node of the Moon is one of the bigger transits of 2024. So it's going to be active all the way until uh, March 14th. So you might want to kind of keep your ears open. Um, you know, it was active all February and then now almost all of March, you know, half of March. Um, so it's a big, it's a big long transit, you know, it's almost two months long. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, that's in Aries um, where Chiron and, and uh, North Node of the Moon are both in Aries. Um, so that is happening. Uh, it's between 16 and 17 degrees of Aries and we're gonna be talking about Aries again in the in the latter part of the video hey Gloria cancer in Florida Sylvia Gemini upstate New York love that we have a couple Floridians here and <laughs> that's nice um, okay so we have Chiron uh, is our healing, you know, what we need to heal, uh, you know, something that could be wounds, could be something from the past, could be a trauma drama, you know, uh, from something from the past. Um, and then something in within us that we have to heal. And the North Node of the Moon is saying, heal that so that we can move on and 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 move into our destiny. Okay, so don't cry over spilled milk, you know, it's almost like the five of cups card in the tarot deck. Um, if you guys have ever seen that where the, the guy standing there and he's like crying because there's three cups that are spilled and empty, but he's not realizing there's some cups behind him that are like full and, and bountiful and plentiful. And I feel like that's kind of like the way this is, you know, it's like we could cry over spilled milk or we could get upset or we could be trigger city or we could be in trauma drama, but, but also we need to clear that to get ahead and to move forward. Now, obviously it's easier said than done. You know, if you're in the middle of some kind of a thing uh, and you're having a moment, um, it's easier said than done to just quote unquote, get over it and then just move along. But mm, that's kind of how Aries talks, you know, Aries, this is all happening in Aries is like, suck it up, buttercup, you got to just keep on going, you know, and that's kind of a little harsh, you know, sometimes Aries can be a little tough like that. Um, Aries is a very scrappy sign. I talk about that a lot. It's a, one of the one of the scrappy signs. So yeah, okay, Kelly said natal Chiron conjunct your midheaven at 16 degrees, Aries. So yeah, you, you might be our reporter here, <laughs> um, Kelly Z. Um, uh, Jean, hey, welcome, uh, Cancer Sun, love that. Okay, so that's coming to a peak ahead, a pinnacle of that tomorrow at 6.46 a.m. Eastern time. But like I said, that's the maximum, but we're still gonna feel this all the way until uh, March 14th. So this is going to be active. So it's really getting us in alignment, clear the old stuff, heal yourself, heal up something might be spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, 
um, you know, on some level healing up, I, I would say when we heal our physical, we are healing our spiritual, our emotional, and a lot of things, you know, I have, I happen to believe that that's the case. Um, and so when we heal up something, we're healing it up so that then we can go and get into what, what are we meant to do here in this life? You know, there's a big word that is associated with the North Node and the Moon, and that's destiny. What is your destiny in this life? And what are you meant to do? You might not natally have uh, Chiron or the North Node in Aries, but that doesn't matter because right now the life lesson of all of us is in Aries, which is about the self. We have to like, it's like you have to kind of be a little spiritually selfish right now and think of yourself because you're going to be moving into some kind of bigger thing. And that's what we're all sort of doing. We're up leveling. So where is Aries in your astrological chart? What house is it in? It doesn't matter if the house is empty or not. What house is it in? Because that's got the flavor of where you're supposed to be putting some of your time, effort, energy. Now, of course, if you have any planets in Aries or Libra, you will be feeling this the most strongest. I mean, that is the maximum peak of, of that, um, you know, for sure. But the other cardinal signs could feel it too. Cancers and Capricorns, okay? Are you listening, Cancers and Capricorns? You might be feeling it too because this is leadership. Aries is absolutely leadership. And Aries sometimes, like I said, is scrappy. You might have to fight for something here. You might have to get, you know, get your chutzpah up because that's what Aries do. We fight, we're always fighting something. <laughs> So that's the deal. Um, oh, no, no. Uh, we'll have to get you another one. Uh, Juliet, uh, by the way, if anybody um, wants, you know, you go on astro.com. It's free. Uh, you can get your astrological chart um, or cafe astrology. I like astro a little bit better, but yeah. Um, hey, Juliet, welcome. Um, Jean, yeah, Jupiter, 16 degrees, 10th house. Okay, so that's that's a career area for sure. Oh, wow. And Kelly, yeah, Mars and Cancer. Yeah, so you might be feeling this, you know, a lot, you know, that if you have any planets at 16 or 17 degrees, you're going to be really super feeling that. Um, so that's, like I said, coming to a peak, and that's Tuesday, March 5th, 6.46 a.m. Eastern Time, 3.46 a.m. if you're on the West Coast. Um, but we're supposed to be moving into some kind of something. Now, when, I just want to say very quickly because I'll use the word destiny because that's the, the word, the key word that's always used with the North and the moon is like where you're, what you're supposed to be doing here in this life. And I get a lot of people that sometimes they get frustrated by that. They go, but Gretchen, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, sailing across the world. I'm not fighting dragons. I'm not, you know, running for president. You know, what am I going to do? But you, we all have our own destiny. Sometimes it's to raise a family. Sometimes it's to have a job. Sometimes it's to volunteer time. You know, like, remember that it like, you know, that we, we have to align with what we're meant to do here. Um, and that's, that's the deal. So wherever you're, Aries is in your chart. And I'm going to be asking that again as I get into Mercury in Aries at the end of the week. Now, it's interesting because here we go with the healing theme again. The next day on Wednesday, March 6th, we have Mars forming a sextile with Chiron. So remember, I just said Chiron is going to be conjunct the North Node of the Moon. Now Mars is forming a sextile with Chiron. Mars is in Aquarius uh, right now probably 16 degrees or 17 degrees, something like that. So if you are an Aquarius, okay, now we're pulling Aquariuses into it. Um, and so, but again, it's active for everybody. So Mars is our, is our um, action. It's our motivation. It can be aggression. It can be, you know, getting spicy. Um, but Mars, you know, is really our physicality. It's like how we move, how we get around. It's our, how we get out of bed in the morning, all that kind of stuff is Mars. So Mars is now saying, well, not only is it good enough to heal, but we have to put our actions towards healing. Like we have to, it's not just like, oh yeah, I hope I can heal that. It's like, no, what are you doing to help yourself? Are you making a doctor appointment? Are you making a therapist appointment? Are you, um, you know, taking vitamins and going for walks? Uh, like, what are you doing to heal yourself? Like, this is, this is not just lip service now. Mars wants us to actually put into action the healing, not just, not just sit around and go, well, I'd like to heal that one day. You know, it's like Mars is like, let's go, you know, like we're not going to mess around. We really have to 
come into alignment with whatever it is. And again, it can be spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically healing something, all of us uh, on some level healing something. So it is a sextile, which is positive. Um, sextiles in astrology often bring opportunity that required some effort on our part in order to bring it to fruition. So here we are with the word effort. Well, Mars is not a sit around sign, Mar uh, planet. Mars is like the action planet. So whenever you think of Mars, it's like you're gonna have to do something. You know, what are we doing here about this healing business, this healing situation? Good news is, is Aries and Aquarius is usually in the Zodiac are besties. So that is something that is really cool. You know, we want to love mankind. We want to, uh, you know, Aquarius, Mars and Aquarius is all about humanitarian efforts, about making the world a better place, you know, um, trying to get along with your fellow you know, members of the world here. And it can even be your friends, you know, like friends in your life. Maybe your friends are healing. You know, that can be something too that we, that we, you know, kind of align with. But whatever it is, we need to heal that up so that we can move on again. Because Chiron's busy also conjuncting the destiny thing. So, so here Chiron is aspected on both days. And Chiron in astrology is called the wounded healer. He was a centaur, very much like Sagittarius, uh, half man, half horse. And he was the healer, except for he couldn't heal himself. That was the mythology around Chiron. A lot of astrologers take that so, so literal, but I do not. And actually, after doing sessions for so, 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 so long, and being a Chiron native myself, my son and my Chiron are conjunct in my chart, being a healer is kind of what my jam is. Um, it's something that uh, Chiron, when you heal up part of yourself, you automatically spread the, you know, and you heal, you heal others with your, what with whatever it is you're healing. So let's say, uh, let's say you hurt your foot or something. And then, and then all of a sudden, you know somebody else that had the same injury as you and then you're like telling them about what you did to heal yourself or you could refer them to a physical therapist or a doctor or somebody that helped you you see so you're helping yourself heal up but you now you help someone else to heal as well and that's what chiron does chiron lifts up i have seen that many many times so think about that when we all heal ourselves there's like a six degrees of separation of that you know, when we heal ourselves, okay, we are healing the planet. We're, it's like one grain of sand at a time. You know, we're healing ourselves, but we're healing the planet. So when people observe us and watch us become healthier, again, physically, mentally, emotionally, psychically, spiritually, when we become healthier, then it lifts up everybody else around us. And then they go out and they, they heal, you know, when they become healed, then they go out and they do the same thing. And then it spreads. We talk a lot about chaos doing that only in the negative, right? Well, but we don't talk enough about how it happens also in the positive. So each and every, what you, what can you do for the planet? You can heal yourself. Okay. That's a huge, huge, huge thing that you can do to help the planet help other people help your friends help your family is for them to see you doing it because we have these little things in our brain called mirror neurons and everybody has them everybody's born with them and and mirror neurons mean that we want to kind of mimic or copy something that somebody else is doing well that can work in the positive too there's even language around that in our culture called monkey see monkey do you know okay but if you heal yourself up Okay, you you are actually helping other people. I I one time um uh did this vending thing where I was doing in person readings at a an astrology uh booth, and I was you know sitting there and I was waiting for people to come, and uh, I had three people that day come up to me. I some some of you may or may not know, but several many years ago, um, I actually lost sixty pounds, and I've actually maintained that through a lot of changes to my diet. One of the biggest changes I made in my life was becoming vegan and doing some other things. I went gluten-free and I've done like a lot of healing work literally on my on my physical. And 
instead of people coming up to me and going, I just have to say to you, oh, you know, something about astrology. They came up to me and they said, you inspired me to go vegan, plant-based, vegetarian. Okay. But I didn't even know that they were like just watching my, my social media and I was inspiring them to improve themselves and their body. So see, it ripples out. And I wasn't even like, I wasn't trying to like, you know, do anything with that. Like they just, it was like sidebar. They came up and they, they were, they were saying how much it inspired them. I didn't even talk to them. They were just watching me on social media. So see, everybody has something that you could inspire someone else. And so that is what Chiron can help us to do. So not only is it a little spiritually selfish, but it's always, always, always going to improve and up level others all around us. It, we have an opportunity to raise up collective consciousness. Okay. We have an opportunity for that. So I like these planetary things coming. Now, Chiron can be, bring up a wound that's, that you know, and people go, I thought you said it was supposed to be so good. No, 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 no. You're bringing up a wound to look at it and then heal that thing, whatever that thing is. Okay. And then as you heal it up, then it uplifts. Okay. Uplifts yourself. Okay. For sure. And then it uplifts others. So that's what the deal is this week on Tuesday going into Wednesday. But like I said, that one thing, uh, Chiron conjunct the North Node is actually active for two months. Uh, so the peak of it's tomorrow and then we'll be coming on the downside of it, but you know, maximize that. If something comes up for you or has been coming up for you, even last week, this is to take it out and just unabashedly, fearlessly, courageously look at the thing and say, Oh, okay. Gotcha. That's still a trigger for me. That thing came up from childhood. Oh, there it is. Okay. But then just how about we love the thing? You know, if it's like a painful, horrible memory or experience, how about we love it? Pull it out and love it. That's what we need to do. Pull it out. <laughs> I hope that helps. Um, oh, thank you, Wendy. Wendy said, you always put me in a better mood. I love that. Uh, <laughs> yes, but yes, no, like ripples through the earth. Exactly. Exactly. It's like the butterfly effect, you know? It's beautiful. All right. So then we get into some stuff here. Okay. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't say it's all butterflies and roses because on Thursday, March 8th, you know how I was just talking about Sunday, Mercury formed an opposition to Black Moon Lilith. We got the sun forming an opposition to Black Moon Lilith on Thursday. Lilith is in Virgo. You know, she's going to be in Virgo totality for nine months. Uh, she's been in there for a little while. Okay, so, oh, thank you, Rosalie, 50 stars. Oh, she gave us, she gave us a little double one there. <laughs> um, so Black Moon Lilith is in Virgo and all these planets going through, okay, Pisces are opposing Black Moon Lilith. Now, I don't know if anybody noticed, but last month in February, I wasn't talking at all about Black Moon Lilith because she didn't have any significant planetary transits at all last month. But this month, we're not so lucky, okay? So Black Moon Lilith is going to be active as these planets go through Pisces. So the sun is going to be opposing Black Moon Lilith. The peak of it, the height of it, the pinnacle of it is going to be 6 a.m. on Thursday, March 7th or 3 a.m. if you're on the West Coast, plus or minus, you know, that's, that's the kind of thing. So, so just like we had, it's almost, it's almost like a Pluto transit, right? Only more mild. Black Moon Lilith can feel dark. She can feel emotional. She can feel, oh, you know, she's raw. She's primal. Now here's the thing. Black Moon Lilith, I just will tell you, she is, hmm, I call her a B word, okay? She, but, but she will tell you what, where to go, how to get there. <laughs> she is not to be messed with. Her her archetype, her fe her feminine archetype is like the wild. She's almost like half, half demon, half beast or something, you know? She's a wild character. And she, you know, does not want to be controlled, manipulated, <laughs> bossed around, pushed around. So black, so people are going to be a little feisty this 
week uh, because of Black Moon Lilith because we just had this weekend, last weekend, Mercury opposing Black Moon Lilith. So if you had anything come up last weekend for you, then you might be all knowing kind of like this is a preview of what's to come this week. And like I said, the peak of it. So we're going to be in the backdrop. We're going to be feeling some of that stuff. And and Lilith is something we would rather suppress. Now, I just told you, Chiron's pulling it all out. Like, hey, let's look at all this stuff. You know, but Lilith is like, I don't want to deal with all that. Like, like she's like shadowy. Like, she's like, I don't want to air my, you know, bring that out to the light. But that's exactly what we're supposed to do. I just said that. You know, Chiron wants us to air this out. Chiron wants us to look at all this stuff and go, let's heal this, you know. So Black Moon Lilith, again, you know, a lot of times we curse our triggers. We say, oh, I don't, you know, I just feel so yucky. And I just feel so triggered, down, blue, depressed. Because in case anybody out there doesn't know what a trigger is, we and we talk a lot about triggers now in society and, you know, YouTube and all that. But, but just in case you're not exactly sure, let's say, I don't even know. Uh, let's say <laughs> you had someone at school you know, throw lemonade on your, you know, favorite outfit or something. And then, and then, you know, you're, you're at a bar current time and someone accidentally spills lemon, lemonade on you again. Oh my God, that could trigger that memory, right? That's, that's what a trigger is. That's like kind of triggering that obviously though, it's usually much more ouchy than something like that, than, than someone spilling lemonade on you. Um, but it could, it could, you know, oh my God, I was bullied at school and that kid hated me and I just had such trauma. Why did my, why did my classmates bully me? Right. Okay, that could bring up, that's how that happens. That's called a trigger. So if you're just walking along and it's like, almost like you hit a landmine, you know, you're walking along, everything seems fine and you don't even know why. Oh, I just feel terrible right now. I mean, I felt awful. So the key to dealing with a trigger is to kind of, first of all, I say go into uh, just low key, just keep it real simple, okay? Um, you don't have to address it right then. You don't have to scream and yell. You don't have to, you know, Okay. And then, and then quietly say, what does this mean to me? What, like, what is coming up for, for me? Oh, you know, this is past trauma or this is jealousy or this is anger or this is something, right? And just kind of sink into it. You can journal, you can meditate, you can pray on it. You know, you can even just do some breathing. Like if, like, if you feel something in your chest and just, Take in some deep breaths. You know, what does this thing want for me? Oh, it wants me to feel special. It wants me to feel loved. It wants me to feel valued and appreciated. Well, I could do that for myself right now. I don't need that thing or those people to do that for me. I can do that for me. So see how this landscape is, is setting us up for something to come up. And, and for everybody, you'll be a little different wherever Virgo Pisces is, wherever Aries is, <laughs> Aquarius is even in there. There's a lot of planetary players here, um, astrological signs. Now, the next day on Friday, uh, March 8th, Mercury is going to form a conjunction with Neptune. So now we're getting into some, <sighs> that's going to be at 10.06 10 a.m. Eastern time is the peak of it. And again, we'll be feeling this during all this too. This is confusing. This is confusing. Confusions, illusions. So so here we could have a big, huge misunderstanding. Do you see the layout, how this is all kind of coming up? Mercury is lies, illusions, delusions. Uh, sorry, ne Neptune and Mercury and Pisces. Lies, illusions, delusions, um, you know, confusion. I'm not even sure what to make of this. So see how, see how this layout is coming up. Something comes up for us. Something has to be healed. And then also this whole thing is confusing. And I'm not even sure. Maybe I misunderstood the whole thing. <laughs> the, we got some trickery going on here. Now that is setting us up for the next day. And that is March 9th. And I'm kind of moving quickly through these because there's two big, big things that I want to get to. I know Andrea said, oh boy. <laughs> well, I mean, if you know the layout, so you guys are lucky. You guys know the layout right now. You can see this coming a mile away. You can go, oh, this is exactly what Gretchen was talking about. Oh, here it is. This is how it's going to be for me this week. 
Okay, I know how to deal with it. I know how to go into my taking a deep breath, asking it what it wants. What does it want? What does it want? What, it, what does it want? You know, and all that kind of stuff. That's what we can do. Now on, on, um, on Saturday, we have Mercury going to be, so, so it made a pit stop on Friday, Mercury, uh, where it formed a conjunction with Neptune, which is right at the end of Pisces. And then it's going to move into Aries on Saturday. That's coming on March 9th, uh, 11.03 PM Eastern time. So at the end of the day on Saturday. And so <sighs> Mercury is now moving into its pre, uh, it's not a, it's not, it's, it's not a pre-shadow just yet of Mercury retrograde, but it's moving into position because eventually on April 1st, Mercury is going to go retrograde in Aries. It is going to be in Aries. Mercury in is going to be in Aries a long time, okay? Because you know I'm usually on here every two weeks, every two weeks, every two weeks. Mercury's moving into this sign, that sign. It usually only lasts for two weeks. It's going to be in Aries all the way until... May 15th, 2024. Oh, Mercury and Aries. So Mercury and Aries. I have Mercury and Aries. I will just say that. <laughs> We're a little blunt, okay? We can be a little feisty, fiery, feisty, argumentative, okay? And I'm just going to tell you like it is. Um, it's similar to a Mercury and Sagittarius in some ways. Uh, both are very blunt, okay? Mercury. Um, now, that's a lot of quick thinking, but that can also be a lot of like flying off the handle quickly. Uh, Mercury in Aries, you know, can be a little feisty, we'll just say. Um, and so it is going to be in for totality all the way from March 9th, all the way to May 15th, 2024. Now I'm going to give you guys the retrograde dates and everything else. Sometimes you guys like to write this down. So I like to, and, and also if you're making plans, if you're if you're, um, you know, needing to, uh, you know, do whatever it is you do, go on vacations or doctor visits or whatever it is you're doing, I want to give you guys the the total deal here. So Mercury is going to go retrograde April 1st. It's not an April Fool's joke, I'm sorry to say. All the way until April 25th. It's always retrograde for three weeks, three times a year. And this is, this is going to be the very first retrograde of 2024, and it's in Aries. All the retrogrades this year, Mercury's uh, retrograde, the three weeks, three times a year, are going to be in fire signs. So all the fire signs are getting picked on this year with the Mercury retrogrades. Okay, so uh, we're going to start the pre-shadow time for this particular Mercury retrograde on March 18th. Okay, we're going to be in the pre-shadow. Okay, and so... I don't really count the pre and the post, but some people like to know those things because really, if you think about the pre and the and the post shadow, it's like now we're really in crunch time and now we're really needing to get things done before Mercury goes retrograde. That's how I look at it. I don't, um, I, I still feel we can get things done during that time. Um, now, you guys know, and then this is not the official Mercury retrograde uh, broadcast, but I'm just kind of saying, uh, that, you know, we want to finish things and not start new things during the Mercury retrograde time. So it's about finishing, wrapping up and completing. So you want to work real hard these next four weeks or whatever it is, three, three and a half weeks, um, until April 1st. Okay. To get some things done. If you have to get your car repaired, if you have to go to the dentist, I always get people going, but I have a dental appointment. I'm like, I don't know. I, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> people, people negotiate with me and I'm like, I'm not in charge of that. <laughs> um, let's see, whatever thing it is you need to do, you know, making a large purchase, gosh, don't purchase a car during Mercury retrograde. It's a terrible idea. Any kind of thing you need to do, try to get it done before the Mercury retrograde time. Um, you know, to the best of your ability. Because remember, these are just guidelines, not hard rules. These are guidelines. So you want to just try as much as possible. I'm giving you a lot of heads up and try not to wait until the very end because 
At that time, at the end of March, Mercury is going to be really slow and very, very sluggish looking. You know, it's going to be really, 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 really slow. So you want to do it like while it's still moving and active. Um, and so that's a thing. Noel said she's traveling on March 18th. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's totally fine. It's not Mercury retrograde yet. Okay, that's just the pre, 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 pre shadow. I don't count the pre shadow because if we did, you know, if you think about Mercury retrograde for a total of nine weeks a year is retrograde. If we started to count all the pre and the post and then this and that, then we'd be like retrograde 100% of the time. That's not true. That's not true. Um, but it just, how I look at it is, it just starts getting more and more crunchy the closer we get to it. You know, it just starts getting uh, more and more into shenanigans, if you will. Um, and then things start to become harder and harder to like achieve, you know? So I would say start working on some things now. And by the way, I always say that the best time to take a vacation is during Mercury retrograde. It's just getting there and getting back home again that can be tricky. The travel part, the part where you have to catch a plane, train, ferry, automobile, that's the part that is um, hard to, you know, navigate. But if you if you are, you know, uh, just going to lay on a beach somewhere, Hey, laying on a beach is better than being at work where the where the printer is going to break down, the laptop's going to break down, the coworkers are going to misunderstand you and then say something mean. I don't know, like you know, whatever mercury retrograde shenanigan that there will be. Now, this is the time I always say the retrograde time is the time to pause the dating apps if you're on a dating app, uh the kind of pause it and whatever. Um Again, we have a we have a whole month. We we have a whole month, okay, before the retrograde begins. But I'm giving you the big heads up because Mercury is entering Aries on Saturday and this is starting. This is going to be the territory. The entire Aries sign is going to be the territory. So where is Aries in your astrological chart? If you are a Libra, you will feel this hardcore from an oppositional standpoint. Where is your Mercury in your chart? Um, uh, do you have other fire? Like, are you, you know, do you have Leo or do you have Sagittarius? That is going to get, they'll all get, all the fire signs will activate at one time. So they'll all get fired up at one time. Um, and this Mercury is not a terrible thing, even though it can be spicy and argumentative and maybe a little grumpy sometimes, but it's not a terrible thing. If you need some chutzpah, if you need some help to speak up, if you need to stick up for yourself and advocate for yourself and, and get things done, and if you need that, this is going to be great for you, okay? Now, if you are already a spicy person and you don't need any help because you got a little bit too big of a mouth, this could get you in some hot water. It really will get you some trouble. Okay. So you want to watch that because it's just going to increase all that. But if you're a shy person, if you're a person who, you know, I don't want to say anything, hurt their feelings. Oh, hell no. This is the time. <laughs> you need to advocate for yourself. You need to get spicy. You need to get yourself fired up and do whatever. Hey, that's okay. That's, that's good. Oh, Holly, thank you so much. hundred stars. The bell, she's wanting to do two rings tonight. I don't know what her deal is. <laughs> Jacoy, oh, you're Libra, right? Okay, so so yeah, that'll test you a little bit. But here's the thing. It's all about advocating for yourself. That is the Mercury in Aries thing, is all about is is the self, right? And it's and it's about like, you know, you know, one thing that I love about Mercury in Aries is a directness. There's no beating around the bush. This is not Mercury and Scorpio or Mercury and Pisces or Mercury and Cancer. We're just like, we're kind of going over the river and through the woods. Nope. That's a direct, that's a direct thing, you know, whether it's nice or not nice. Now, I always say Mercury and Aries needs a little bit of je ne sais quoi. Okay. It needs to, it needs to practice. Let's put our polite filter on. Okay. And not have to be so, you know, um, that there is that, there is that. Okay. Um, that's, you know, it's not very diplomatic. Okay. Um, and so that can be extra, but if you, like I said, are someone who's shy and you need a little extra, you need some help getting out there and pushing yourself and maybe, um, you know, telling it like it is, uh, you've been, you've been thinking, oh, well, I got to tell it like it is. Okay. Well, this will help you. This is going to help you. Um, this could help you if you're in sales, um, 
you know, teacher, any kind of thing where you really need to communicate in a very direct, uh, honest way. You know, that's a very, um, uh, we might be drawn to fast moving cars, vehicles, planes, trains, automobiles, which is fine until it goes retrograde, then it's not good. Uh, but there's a speed here. Okay. Uh, we like to communicate quickly and there's a speed there. Um, so we might be drawn to those types of fast moving uh, things. We might find ourselves uh, moving at a faster rate. So we got to be careful driving. Okay. That can be a thing. <laughs> Oh, I love that, Andrea. Here's to saying it like it is. One, one, one stars. I like that. Um, uh, thank you very much. Um, so that is going to be happening, like I said, on Saturday night, 11.03 p.m. Eastern time, earlier than that if you're on the West Coast. And um, we're in it. We're starting to move into the realm of 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 bef before the pre <laughs> the retrograde starts uh we're moving into the section the sector okay but i want to get to the big news this is the big news of the week we have a new moon coming uh next sunday so um this is going to be on march 10th and this is going to be in pisces and even though we have our first planet here of the pack moving into Aries. You can hear there's a lot of Aries energy with Chiron in Aries, North on the Moon in Aries. Now we're going to have Mercury in Aries, but we still have to remember we're technically still in Pisces season. So they're kind of overlapping here a little bit. Um, so yay, happy new moon, everybody in Pisces. It is going to be 20 degrees Pisces. This is coming on Sunday, March 10th. Uh, the peak or the height of it is happening at 5 a.m. Eastern time. So overnight um, at like, what is that? 3 a.m. Uh, on the West Coast here. Um, that is going to be the new moon in Pisces, 20 degrees Pisces. So where is Pisces in your astrological chart? You will feel this almost like a full moon if you are a Virgo. Okay. So just so that you guys know, Virgos are, might get a little pushed here a little bit. There's some, there's some Virgo energy right now. That's a little crunchy. Um, so, so yes, if you have a Pisces moon natally in your birth chart, this is your new moon. Okay. If you are a cancer or a Scorpio, you will feel this because again, water signs will activate. Okay. So, and then, and then even the mutables will activate. So again, Pisces, Virgo, Gemini, Sagittarius, you might feel this too. So, so there's a lot of signs that this will affect, but this is going to be another super new moon, meaning that this new moon is very, very, very close to the planet right now. Okay, so this is going to be extra close, extra, uh, you know, extra powerful. Um, now, we won't see it. It's not going to be a super moon that we can see because the new moon is also the black moon or the dark moon, it's called. Um, and so there's no, there's no, it'll look like no moon in the sky, but that doesn't matter because it's going to be pulling up the tides. There's going to be a very strong gravitational pull. This is a time where, you know, People can mate, <laughs> animals mate, okay? Uh, menstrual cycles, the tides, all the stuff is going to be stronger because it is a super moon. Now, just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's powerful. I mean, we never see full uh, new moons. We only see full moons, uh, but that doesn't matter. It's still a super moon, which means it's very, very close to, to us here on the planet. All right, so it is going to be happening also, because that's daylight savings time that day, um, overnight between Saturday and Sunday is daylight sa savings time. So <laughs> it's, there's a lot all going on at once. So this is, this is with the adjustment made for daylight savings time. If you're watching this and you're not in the United States, you might have to Google like the time because, uh, a lot of times other countries are delayed with the daylight savings time or whatever. So, or some countries don't even do it. So you have to check. Um, so this new moon is going to be very powerful and in Pisces, like I said, so watery, emotional, compassionate Pisces. Our, our intuition is going to be up through the roof, our intuitive feelings. I did wear tonight, I, I remembered to wear my aquamarine ring here, which is a very, very, very light blue color. If anybody can hopefully see that on the camera, um, that is my aquamarine. Now that is Pisces official stone for March. So if you are a March Aries or if you are March Pisces, this is the stone for you. 
You know, I am always talking about how Pisces is the ruler of the 12th house in our astrological sign. It's the subconscious. It's the unconscious. It's, it's, um, it is, uh, the area where we kind of go to process things, where we go to rest, where, you know, this could be a sleepy new moon. I'll just say that it could be sleepy. Aquamarine is one of the very best stones for grieving or grief. If you have anything like that coming up for you, remember this week could there could be a trigger in some some way, shape, or form. If you have grief uh, coming up for you, Aquamarine is really one of the very best stones um, for that. Um, and so it's really it's a gentle uh, sort of you know stone. I I love Aquamarine. It's it is my birthstone, and I also love it um, very much. It's actually all the rage right now as an engagement ring. Aquamarine is um, trending right now instead of a diamond uh, to get Aquamarine as an engagement ring. A lot of people are doing that. Oh, I'm sorry, Wendy. You said your mom's a Virgo and having a tough time with depression. I'm sorry. Um, yes, Holly, new moon. <laughs> I know Rita said. Oh, great. Um, uh, uh oh okay uh holly said your is your son is march 13th oh well have, is that his birthday um i'm wondering uh thank you jennifer you said she said a beautiful ring thank you i i love this ring um and uh yeah it's very <laughs> it's very uh powerful ring um you might need to get an aquamarine. Okay. And they do sell them. I used to have, I have one sitting around here. I didn't say used to, I have all my stones, but I have, I have, uh, something that's my nephew's birthday, Holly, uh, March 13th. Yeah. It's his birthday. So happy birthday <laughs> to your son. Yeah. I mean, it is an emotional sign. Okay. And we might have big feelings coming up this weekend, big feelings. Now I didn't, I kind of glossed over Saturday because I wanted to kind of talk about this sort of all at one time because it's it's kind of all related. We have on Saturday, March 9th, we have Mars forming a square with Uranus. And then, and that's going to be 5.55 p.m. And then we have the sun forming a sextile with Uranus and that's going to be 6.01 p.m. That's on Saturday. And then behind the scenes of this new moon, very, very extremely early on Sunday morning is going to be Mercury forming a sextile with Pluto. Ooh, that's a lot of Mercury and, 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 and Uranus energy. There might be an earthquake. There might be something this weekend because Mars, especially squaring Uranus, that can be, that can be a lot. Uh, you know, that can be like sudden uprisings of violence. That can be, that can be some stuff. Okay. So, behind the behind the scenes okay when we get into um this new moon which is in pisces and that's a positive thing i mean that's that can be good um we have some we have some energy that's that's difficult behind the scenes uh especially with that mars square uranus again that's coming to a peak on saturday but we'll be feeling it of course sunday monday tuesday you know we'll be feeling that um and then with Mercury forming a sextile with Pluto on the day of the new moon, that's actually on the day of. So this is something that could come out very unexpectedly, very unexpected events. Where is Uranus in, is in Taurus? Um, you know, we have Mars in Aquarius. Then we have the sun in Pisces forming a sextile with Uranus. This, this is, this is some, there's some energies behind the scenes that are spicy and, and very, could be quite contentious especially with that mars mars square uranus thing could be quite contentious and then we have mercury moving into aries so see how we could get ourselves into some hot water here a little bit you know with communication with something the energy of this is very kind of erratic um very um how do i say it like jumping to the jumping to conclusions jumping the gun doing things prematurely, rushing, pushing, getting a little aggressive, you know, spicy. Um, and so we want to slow down a little bit during this. Now, the good news, the new moon in Pisces will help us to slow down. And then we're going to be tired on top of it. So wired, but tired, right? Uranus is wired and Mars is wired, but tired with this new moon. So I would say take really some time this coming weekend to really ground yourself, 
be in water, be around water. Uh, water will be very healing during that new moon. So if you live near a, a lake or an ocean or a stream or, or yeah, I don't know, an aquarium or some kind of thing where you can be around water, that would be very healing. If you can take a bubble bath, Epsom salt baths are very actually cleansing um, to the body. But anything like that that you can do for yourself during this time, I think would be really fantastic to ground yourself because we're going to be feeling all the feelings and the emotions. You know, where is Pisces in your astrological chart? What house is it in? What is close to 20 degrees in your chart? And those those are all some clues that will give you um, to be able to uh, come into. Uh, but we're going to be feeling our feelings. This whole week really is a lot about feelings. You know, I I, I kind of like the triggering and the this and the that. It feels like all feelings to me. Um, and then Mars is active. Mars wants to do something about all this. Mars is being a little pushy and aggressive in, in the feeling. So, you know, if you think about that, that's like feminine energy, masculine energy, kind of like fighting a little bit. So, so we got to know when to feel our feelings and then when to act and when not to, when to like kind of pause and step back, you know, um, when we look at that new moon, we want to write out our new moon manifestation list. We want to write out everything, okay, that we would like to have on our new moon list. We want to fold it up and put it under our pillow for two weeks. We will burn or destroy it on the next full moon, which is coming at the end of the month. That's going to be on March 25th, okay? And because this was a super moon, now the next full moon will be a micro moon and that's going to be also a lunar eclipse so everybody's talking about the big huge huge big huge big big huge eclipse coming on april 8th and that's going to be a big deal it's this that's going to be the big eclipse that everybody's talking about of 2024 but we have another little eclipse before then we have a full moon penumbral eclipse, which means it's kind of like a partial little eclipse. It is going to be a lunar eclipse, full moon on March 25th. And that is going to be in Libra. Okay. So, cause at that time, the sun will be in Aries at that point, And then the moon will be in Libra. So it's going to be five degrees Libra. Um, so if anybody out there has Libra Aries, you know, we'll be feeling all these, all these eclipses and moons. So when we get into, you know, eclipse season, as we get closer and closer, pay really close attention to what happens around eclipses because that is usually the start of a, of a six month new cycle. Uh, so we see, we're coming into like some really big, I kept, I've been talking about April since, uh, probably last year. <laughs> Um, oh, good, Jennifer. You got your special glasses to see the eclipse. That's awesome. Awesome. Uh, Natalie, I take questions at the end. Yes. Happy birthday to all the people out there. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of birthday people coming up. Um, and so, so this is really a powerful time that we have here. And I always say with, with Pisces, this is very, very highly intuitive. A lot of people will be sensitive. A lot of people will be feeling their feelings and emotions. There's going to be a lot around that Pisces moon. So have patience with yourself, have patience with others. And, and also to, if you can, because of that, uh, the Mars and the Uranus, and all that, take a step back, take a step away if you can especially next weekend, and really just calm your body, calm your nervous system, allow yourself to kind of feel your feelings, regulate, all those types of things, because that can really help you. Now, if you need to ground yourself, you know, you're looking at getting really dark stones, darker the better, um, you know, onyx, um, uh, jet, um, all the black stones, tourmaline, all those black stones will help to ground our energy. Hematite even is another good one that kind of helps us to ground our energy. And so this is something that will really help us to huh, find our center because this new moon, the new moon itself is good, but the stuff surrounding the new moon could be, could be a little, could be a little test testing, I guess, if you want to, if you want to say that, especially Mercury forming a sextile with, with Pluto, we're going to want to get deep. We're going to be cathartic. We're going to want to either talk to somebody, a, t a counselor, a best friend, somebody that we can really like chew with and like talk about ourselves, our feelings, our emotions, all the things. Um, so you might want to prepare and say, you know what, if no one's around, I'm going to journal. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do EFT. I'm going to tap it out. 
Okay. I'm going to, um, you know, any kind of self-help, maybe you want to go for a walk, be out in nature. Pisces is really super nature oriented. Okay. Pisces is the ocean. There could be something coming up around that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a lot, it's a lot of stuff. So, so that was this week in astrology. Um, I'm open for any questions that you guys may have. Um, I, I will just recap in a second. I will say the next day on Monday, which I'm going to save this for next Monday because I had so much to talk about tonight, but we are going to be getting, uh, Venus is moving into Pisces next Monday night, and that's going to be on March 11th, uh, at 5 50 PM. So right before the broadcast, Mar uh, Venus will be changing signs. Uh, Venus has been in Aquarius this whole month and now is going to be moving into Pisces. So that'll be a nice, uh, shift and a nice change. Um, but I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to save that for next Monday night because there was so much to go over tonight. Fiance, important, important, now let me look at this <laughs> all right hopefully that helps okay and I can't answer everybody's questions because I, I can only cover what spirit guides me towards but I'm pulling a card for Andrea what does she need to know what does she need to know See, there's something coming up for you, my dear. All right. Um, and it, this is the card. Uh, these are during virtue cards. Forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. Okay. So there's something coming up for you. Maybe this was part of this week. Um, there's something from the past that we need to heal, forgive, let go of, wrap up, you know. Um, yeah. Yes, I can, uh, Amir. Right. Stay optimistic. You need to stay optimistic. Positive thinking and faith will bring you love, romance, whatever you want. You know, I mean, really staying optimistic. Okay. So I would say something is coming up and then also something uh, needs to be healed, Andrea. Um, but stay optimistic. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Jennifer said, have a great week, everyone. I love that. I love that. Hmm. All right. I don't know. Let me just see. Looking back. <laughs> yes, Almir. Uh, Almir said, uh, can you talk about astrocartography sometime? I can. Um, I can't do like a whole thing about it, but I have um, definitely I have brought up uh, some uh, astrocartography maps for you guys in the past. Um, we haven't had an event that I felt guided to bring up a map lately, but, but I will, I can, and I will, um, cause I think that would be fun too. <laughs> uh, Joanne, what you should be doing financially. Hmm. Oh, real estate. <laughs> this fell out. This is a castle card. Look at that real estate. That's real estate. It's real estate. That was easy. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you're asking, but that's what came out. Popped, it flew out on the floor. I didn't I didn't even pull it. Um, no, oh, still job rejections. Let me look. I think the last time uh, we were talking, uh, I felt something that was around your around your husband. He's the first card is the rules and regulations card. And, and he might be feeling a little bit out of his power right now. He feels a little bit like helpless or hopeless, but it's saying there's money. There's still money. Like there, you're getting good cards around money. So I don't know why it hasn't come yet. My dear, I would be doing some work around that. Okay. All right. Sylvia, uh, what card? Let me just see here. Sylvia just wants a general one card and then I'm going to pull a card. Okay. Um, for one, for a collective card, what we all need to know, uh, for the week. Okay. Uh, so Sylvia, I'm going to pull a card for you very quickly. Freedom. 
freedom. Look at her. She's beautiful too. Like she's a butterfly, but also an angel looks like a butterfly. Um, it looks like you're going through a metamorphosis, a change, but you're coming out onto the other side where you can fly, be free, whatever it is. But it's saying to, um, free yourself of whatever it is that's dragging you down, bothering you, and then know that you're in the middle of some kind of a big change and that you're coming out on the other side. Hopefully that helps. Yay. So we need to know what is going to happen with this big new moon, all of this energy. Okay. We have just to recap very quickly, we have Chiron forming a conjunction with the North node on Tuesday. And then the next day forming a sextile with, uh, Mars is forming a sextile with Chiron. So we have a lot of Chiron healing. Something needs to be healed. Then the following day, we have Trigger City. We have the sun forming an opposition with Black Moon Lilith. And then on Friday, we have a little additional, a little bit confusion because Mercury is forming a conjunction with Neptune on, on Friday. Then as we get into Saturday, it gets spicy, okay? We have Mercury moving into Aries. We have those... Um, Mars uh, and the sun, both aspecting Uranus. Okay, so something shake up, unexpected events, something coming on on around that time, and then and then we get into the new moon, which is an interesting new moon. It's on one hand, it's going to bring new things. Remember to do your new moon manifestation list, write it all down, all that kind of stuff, and it's about uh, you know kind of aligning with your dreams and miracles and all that kind of stuff. But then also we have we do have a Pluto thing going on with Mercury. So we have to watch how we're communicating around that, that next weekend for sure. All right. So what do we need to know about this week in astrology, this new moon, all of this wonderful energy? What do we need to know about it? Okay. Yeah. I have the feeling there's going to be a, an event. Um, this is the nature card. Now, remember I said, get outside and play. Uranus, by the way, is lightning. Um, I do have a feeling that in a bigger global way, there might be a big earthquake or a volcanic thing or storms or flooding or something coming. Um, because Uranus tends to bring a lot of, you know, produce a lot of things. Neptune can even bring a lot of water. Um, but this is also saying be grounding, ground yourself into nature, get outside, go to a, you know, aquarium, a planetarium, a, a greenhouse, something where you can like, if you can't be outside and maybe you live in a city or something, but something where you can be around some degree of nature, plants or something. I'm going to pull more cards. Okay. I got, uh, let's see, I have some love cards here too. So let me look and see what that's going to happen for our love, our love zone. Okay. Yeah. See, I was, I'm feeling like something's coming with this healing family issues. Look at that. Okay. Your love life or your life, you can say benefits as you forgive your parents. Okay. So remember I said, there's going to be some trigger stuff going on, uh, with Chiron. All right. And I'm going to use one more deck here. <laughs> I'm pulling out all the decks. Okay. What else do we need to know about this week? I always say one card, but sometimes I'm guided to do more than one. Uh, what do we need to know about this new moon? Yeah, there are gifts. There are gifts in the middle of all this. See, I was saying, I feel like there's something to be healed, to be learned. Okay. To be shared. Archangel Sandalfin, which is by the way, Archangel Sandalfin is the Archangel for Pisces. So this is that Pisces new moon. Uh, we angels bring you gifts from your creator. Open your arms to receive. And sometimes these gifts, things that are things like these triggers and things we have been talking about. Sometimes these gifts are actually, they are wrapped up in kind of a packaging that we think is hard, ugly, uh, maybe a little triggery, whatever it is. Um, we might not think of it as a gift or a blessing at the time, but I do feel that that is going to be a thing that it's going to be. Um, we can turn that into a positive. I hope that helps. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you already have, you're awesome. I appreciate you. And if you want to have a personalized astrological session with me, definitely give me a call. Uh, send me a text message is the best way. But if you don't have my number, you can email me, whatever. I have all the link in the description, um, how to contact me. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining. Um, happy Monday night. And I hope you guys have a great week and new moon. Bye. Namaste.